Welcome to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make the dance sport, country, and skate dress of your dreams. Today, we are filming on location in Raleigh, Durham, in Yannicka Lilia's home studio. Now, she does synchronized skating as well as designs and makes skate dresses. So this is a really exciting interview. Now, she grew up synchronized skating and she and her team won the 2006 World Championships. Now, Janneke, how did you get from Finland, your home country, to the U.S.? Well, when I uh, was ready with my skating career and I was ready to um, go in and uh, focus on other things in my life, I found uh, Academy of Art University in San Francisco and moved over to California to go and study women's wear, fashion design, and knitwear. So you, at that point in time, you weren't even making skate dresses, but you said you designed some skatewear while you were in, um, in college. Yes, I started designing for my former um, synchro organization I mm -hmm. skated for, and, uh, and I also worked with some ice dancers from Canada and, and from Germany as well, and I have slowly, ever since then, kind of grown my customer base. Nice. Well, and see, and that's one of the great things about um, skating is that it really is a global community. So, but we will come back to her designing and how that fits into traveling and global community. So, but you're on, so San Francisco on the West Coast, fashion school, then you moved to New York City and had some really great high fashion experience there, including a Guggenheim Museum exhibit. Yes, um, I actually started going to and working Fashion Week already when I was in college and flying mm -hmm. to New York a couple couple times a year. And then as soon as I graduated, I moved to New York City and mm -hmm. and uh, did internships with Iga Azrael and Donna Karen Collection. Nice. And then um, got hired and, and worked in the high-end fashion industry for several years. One of the cool projects was the Guggenheim Museum's 30th anniversary gala, like you mentioned, um, and collaborating with choreographer Emery Lacrone. Okay. But skating was always sort of tugging at you, right? And so that's how you ended up in the Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina area, because you miss skating? Yes, yeah. Um, I didn't have much time to go to the rink when I was when I was working in the fashion industry, as we know, it's a very busy industry, yes. <laughs> and uh, and I, I really wanted to be part of the synchro program again. So I started um, full time coaching first from uh, and driving from Brooklyn to Philadelphia six times a week, oh, um, which I think shows how much I miss skating. And then um, uh, about a year later, uh, my wife and I were ready to look into a new location and leave New York City and then we found the Raleigh Durham area and uh, and I started my my own synchro program here. All right so you are head coach of this for what two years now you said? Yes uh, this will be our third season um, and my program is called Triangle Formation. We're a nonprofit. We've been kind of slowly or, or actually very quickly trying to grow our our program and our goal is to really um, rise as a, a nationally competitive uh, organization in the next five to ten years. Okay. Which it sounds like from what I've read on your website and, and other bio information online, it sounds like you're really moving at a pretty fast pace there, which is great. What, what astounded me when I started looking into the Raleigh-Durham Raleigh area is how many skate rinks there are here. There's what, four or five skate rinks? I think we're more somewhere around six and we oh, actually wow. have more rinks coming too. Wow. So North Carolina is actually uh, one of the fastest growing ice sports areas in the country. You don't necessarily travel to do coaching to different rinks within the area, but you do do a lot of traveling around the U.S. and globally to teach other synchronized, to like do coaching for other synchronized teams and things like that, yes? Yeah, um, we actually do travel all over the rinks in the area oh, too. Wow. Yeah, we, we skate at several of the local rinks and we have, you know, people from the entire Triangle mm -hmm. area coming and skating with, with our teams. Uh, and on top of that, I've been um, coaching first in the U.S., um, doing seminars and choreography with different teams, and and uh, you know last year 
I worked with a team in Maryland and a team in upstate New York during their choreography camp. And, and this season I'll be traveling to um, Wisconsin, Indiana, North Dakota, and Australia. Okay, so she's really busy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very lucky to have this interview her, with her today. If you are interested in hiring Yannicka to come and coach your synchro team, all of her information is below. Her website, you can contact her directly there. She's just absolutely amazing. And then there's also several links to TV shows because you just had um, some excerpts for your synchro team on a couple of television shows, yes? Yeah, we, um, we were featured in ABC 11 News. Okay. We did a big international camp with One Team Movement, which is another nonprofit organization nice. supporting synchronized skating uh, and trying to get us our sport into the Olympics. And those links are on her website, but I've also given you direct links below just in case you just want to watch those news clips. Now, are you going to be holding that international um, camp? Yes, every year. Is that going to try to be a yearly thing you're organizing? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And can they get the contact in case they want to to come and attend that? Can they get the contact information off of your website for that? Yes, we will have um, probably sometime at the end of this year. We okay. will start um, promoting next year's camp. And also you can look it up at one team movement dot com um, with the other nonprofit organization that we partner up with. I told you all of that to let you know one how busy she is and now she has 90 dresses to make which is we're going to get into dresses now but two because she's so multi-talented and multifaceted it's really a pleasure to have you here. Now as most of you know who've been following me for a while I run an online sewing school teaching people how to make competition quality, ballroom, country, and skate dresses. So this is really perfect because Yannicka makes dresses for mostly just your team, correct? She'll make the rehearsal wear and the actual competition wear. So you have about 90 outfits to make as soon as I leave the door, <laughs> as soon as I get out of her way, she will get back to work. <laughs> Making dresses is not your primary focus, right? Coaching is. Yes. And then you also design dresses for skaters and then just give it to them so that they can make it themselves. You could enroll in my school and then tag team it that way. Or um, like a lot of moms make. So when mm -hmm. you're designing for skaters, do um, what's the most common age category that you design for? I actually just, I would say uh, teenagers and young women uh, mm -hmm. would be one of my biggest areas, but I, I really do costumes from, you know, seven year olds to uh, mm -hmm. even to women in their 40s. Okay. See, yeah. and, and this is what was great because when I retired from competitive ballroom, I started ice dancing <laughs> just for fun. So there is, and with my sewing school, I focus on curves. When, you know, not little children, those things are easy to make and there's hardly anything to it. But when you get to be a blossoming teenager or an adult or even, you know, someone my age who wants to get into competition, we have a whole set of design and fitting requirements that is really not covered anywhere that I found really except here with these videos. So this is really awesome free training for you all. So where to start? Um, Let's let's talk about your designing since that's what you do a lot of. Mm -hmm. When you are designing for a client, how do do they contact you from your website? How do they contact you for one? Um, hmm. I would say the synchro world is very small at the end okay. of the day. So um, I've gotten the chance to meet a lot of amazing people, and um, you know, personally know I think most of the big program coaches in, in the country and, and even internationally just from being in the sport for so long and attending seminars and com competing all over the country and so forth. So really a lot of my relationships have just built over time. Um, sometimes I can get a request from co somebody completely new that mm -hmm. I have never met before, but it's usually just word, word of mouth, mm -hmm. which is why I haven't had a chance to even make a website yet. <laughs> For myself. <laughs> well, and it's yeah. nice that you're so busy that you don't necessarily need it. So now let's say if someone watching this video decides that they want you to design um, a dress for them, do you do only synchronized 
dresses for the t for the entire teams, or do you do also singles? I do singles. I do I stands. Mm -hmm. I've never done pairs, but I would love to do that okay. too. And of course, synchro. My definitely most of my customers are synchro based. Okay, um, right which is, you know, different because it's a team versus a singles dress and, a, you know, I also make some singles dresses uh, just for local people mm -hmm. um, here and there if I have uh, just a little pocket of time because it's fun and it's more, you know, it's unique and it's one of a kind piece. So that's always a, a fun yes. challenge to do. Yeah. So if you are interested in having Yannicka design a skate dress for you, just again, her contact information for her website for the synchronized skate team is below. If we talk about designing mm -hmm. for your synchronized teams or for any synchronized team, there are so many shapes and figures. What's your biggest challenge when trying to design for, what, six people, 12 people, 20 people? Usually it's, uh, you know, team would be eight to 20, okay. depending on the level. 16 is the ideal team mm -hmm. that all the, you know, professional teams do. I would say one of the most challenging groups is when you have kids from um, from 8 to 13 in the same team because you have mm -hmm. you know kids who are still kids and then you have kids who are more like teenagers and they're starting to get you know their bodies are changing mm -hmm. and the height differences can be tremendous so making something that will look good on everybody and and look the same because they are supposed to still look the same and uh, same thing with an adult team um there was one year that i once made an adult team's dresses and like you said you know curves are very different to work with um and you know the older we get i think the the more different shape <clears throat> shape bodies we have in a team too so that was definitely the most challenging group that i ever yeah. made dresses for when you design for the synchro team they typically um do um, synchronized teams typically have as many fast spins as say like a, a single skater or a pair skater do you have as many issues with say fabric wrapping around the legs or do you have more freedom with skirt lengths and skirt fabrics uh typically synchro teams have more like ice dance costumes that are tend to be a little bit longer okay. um we synchro kind of combines all of the different forms of of um, figure skating together so with the junior and senior teams who you know compete internationally and, and have world championships and so forth they do lifts they do pair lifts they do um group mm. lifts they do um some spins they do very fast twizzle series where <clears throat> they move across the ice while twirling at the same time uh they're constantly attaching to each other they do some ice dance moves they do some pair skating moves they can even have throw uh jumps mm. these days so yes the, the dresses have like have to go through quite a lot and i think one of the biggest things is to make sure that for the big lifts that go above the head uh, you know there's not going to be any danger of something slipping or or not getting a good grip on on the girl who is going up right and then one of the um in our pre-interview something that you mentioned that was interesting that in if i remember correctly in the united states you said that the Synchronized teams cannot have rhinestones on their dress, but overseas they do. Can you, am I saying that correctly? Can you yes. clarify that? Um, there is only um, junior, senior, and collegiate level who are allowed to have uh, rhinestones on their dresses, and then nobody else is allowed to, um, <laughs> which is uh, a very interesting US rule. I almost feel like it's, um, to avoid uh, parent drama <laughs> between teams, <laughs> because um, I could see that being an issue here. But um, yeah, that's it's kind of a shame because you know the, the kids love to sparkle and they, right. it's always fun. And then they see other countries' teams who are the, you know, the same level as they are mm -hmm. skating in these beautiful sparkly rhinestone dresses and, and they wonder, mm -hmm. why can we never have that? Right. Uh, well, it, I, I think probably a lot of the um, trying to minimize parent drama is probably a really good point. It also keeps the cost down. Yeah. It's less stressful for the parents. Uh, I, mean, I know in the ballroom world, they have certain age categories and dance levels. So like all the beginning people can't wear rhinestones mm -hmm. and they have to wear very specific modest dresses because they got so, especially for Latin dancing, they got so far out of whack. They look like grown women and they were eight. <laughs> 
So I imagine for American children, that's really frustrating to have no rhinestones and then see somebody else's dress with, you know, thousands of rhinestones on yeah. it. Yeah, and it really goes all the way up to the teen, you know, uh, older teenager and e even young adult categories. Wow. The same rules. It's just these very highly competitive teams who get to do that. So the very highly competitive teams would be the ones that compete on a on a the global circuit. Yes. And yes. if the if synchronized skating can go into the Olympics, then they would of course then sort of be one of the first ones to go in then. Yes, I mean, you, you still have to qualify out of, you know, it's very competitive in those mm -hmm. levels, so a lot of teams won't even get an international status, but usu usually in the U.S., I think the top five, top six get to, um, you know, get the Team USA status, mm -hmm. and then they get to compete over um, who gets to go to Junior Worlds and who gets to go to Senior Worlds. Let's come back to talk about designing for people, because I think this is super fascinating. Usually whenever I would design a dress, it would be for a client and I would actually then make the dress afterwards. Mm -hmm. Now, since I've got the online sewing school going, I make little or no costumes unless I can film it <laughs> because I'm so busy doing all of this. But my pro so I'd like to compare processes basically mm -hmm. because I think it does take a while for up and coming designers or even for people who make their own dresses making a decision on the design is the most painful part for me and I think for a lot of women because you can have that as my skate coach used to say you could have paralysis by analysis <laughs> my skate coach would say just do it already <laughs> stop thinking about it but so let's say for a client if mm -hmm. I called them or they, they contacted me I would arrange a time to talk on the phone and I would ask them 20 or 30 specific questions so I could get to know them, their body shape, their body size, and and go from there. And then I would design three sketches based on everything they told me and some photos that they searched through. I would send them high fashion images. Mm -hmm. Say, now which of these high fashion images do you like and why? So I could get a, a visual idea of what it is they like. I would do the three sketches for them, send it off to them with the fabric samples and say, pick your sketch and which fa first and second choice fabric. And then we could make a change after that if they wanted to. And then I would basically just start making the dress. Your process is completely different. So would you tell us all about that, please? Honestly, every customer is different for me. Uh, and by now, you know, I have customers that I've worked with for 11 years and one of them is my former coach. So the way that we started was all already in a different place from from you know i because i i felt like i knew her vision pretty well already mm -hmm. and of course in the beginning we had to do a lot of sketches before we found the perfect one and you know she was worried about telling the theme to me so she actually had me do a lot of extra uh sketches in the beginning because she wanted to uh, trick me a little bit and see if I if I reveal the theme to anybody or not. <laughs> um, I do not let her do that anymore. <laughs> that's a lot of time. I know this was also you know I was still in college so it was okay oh, wow. but um, yeah now we have a pretty straightforward process sometimes it takes a really long time to find the right design mm -hmm. um, you know for example her she likes to send me some reference images that she finds um, sometimes she has very specific things that she wants in the dresses. Sometimes she even has fabrics that she wants in the dresses. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's it's like, okay, this is the music, this is the feeling, go with it. Um, and sometimes we get it right away on the first try, and sometimes it can be 10 sketches later. Right. Um, some other customers um, send me just very kind of, um, you know, few words and a little concept and then I go off of that uh, and uh, you know I've kind of gotten to know everybody to a point that I know what they like and usually there is like one dress out of several that takes a little bit longer to get just right than the other ones but it's really fun to work with so many different people because everybody has you know different tastes and different vision and, and my job is just to make sure that their vision is supported um, and uh, so basically, after we um, work out the design, I usually do it with fabrics in mind already. So I will, the first thing that I look at when I start a design is, okay, what fabrics would work with this? And then I kind of go off of that. Sometimes, sometimes it can be um, 
the, the design comes first and the fabrics are found second, but I always find that a little bit more challenging because you might not find what you need. Oh, yes. Um, and I have some, some fabric people in New York that I like to work with and, and send my customers to too. So once the design is finalized, um, I will put together kind of like a little design packet uh, with some main construction notes that I want the, the costume maker to see. Uh, sometimes it can be how to cut the skirt or um, you know how many inches some trim is um, and uh, you know pair it with the fabrics and uh, we have to of course plan out the closures and how you get in and out of the mm -hmm. dress. That's another thing that's always a little uh, different with skating costumes because they're so tight fitting and and you don't want ugly zippers to show from the back and so forth. So I, I try to do dresses with no zippers if possible. Uh, sometimes a zipper can be a lifesaver and can make everything a lot easier. Uh, but of course, you have to be careful that you don't have any buckling in the back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then sometimes, you know, there can be a setback. Maybe the, the fabric is out of stock or um, you know, something changes or it doesn't look as good on the eyes as we plan it to or the color is off or, or something so we have to go back and fix fix it. So when you're yeah. doing all of that, do you charge by the hour? Do you charge by the design? Because that sounds like you have a really wide variety of options for people basically when you design. They could mm -hmm. just take a design and that would be easy for you, maybe a couple of hours. Or you could literally tell them, like you said, the construction and or make a lot of design revisions or even, you know, change it after the fact, after it's already been worn. So how do you how do you price for that and how do you time budget? Because it's got, there's a lot of variables. What one thing I found as a you know, creative person is that it's really hard to know how much something is going to take when you're designing, when you're being creative. Yeah. It can be an hour or it can be 10 hours. Mm -hmm. It really, everything is different. So I just have a set uh, design fee and usually I would say I can do five to eight revisions of the sketch if I really need to. That's pretty rare. Usually it's, it's one to three. Um, but there has been some cases where you have to go back a lot. Yeah. Do you also make patterns for people and sell them the patterns or just the designs? I don't make patterns for people, yeah. just for my own dresses, of course, yes. but no, patterns are just for me. <laughs> okay. And that's one of the, the things that I get a lot of emails from and people find me on YouTube. So in the sewing school, I literally created a blueprint system teaching them how to make a custom pattern for themselves just for you know the, the extra small how mm -hmm. it's how much smaller it is it's really body shape size and then how to use it for country ballroom skate and how to use it for different designs because that is a huge issue for a lot of people trying to make their own dresses or when moms try to make it for their child or even for themselves mm -hmm. I actually have so many questions but you have a bunch of dresses to make so is there anything that I have not asked you that you would like to say before we wrap up what like some key things I would say to keep in mind when you design for a team on ice is uh, really think about how much stuff is going on in the dress. Sometimes little details can look very good even for, from far away, but a lot of times I see, you know, so much little stuff that it doesn't really deliver when you see it from, from further away. It's in synchro, you, wanna, you don't want to be right by the ice, you want to be a little bit higher up so you can see all the beautiful elements from above but still close enough that you can see the emotion and the expression. It's, it's kind of like a fine balance of, of where you place your details, how you place them, also symmetry and how you can help the team, for example, look really good and, and have great posture and then still have everybody match. Whereas like some costumes that are super, super asymmetrical or if there is um, different color in the front and in the back, um, it can be very distracting on the eyes and actually make the team look less synchronized so there are yeah. a lot of little things to think about um, and of course budget too when you do that many costumes um, you know if you put a lot of detail in, it's going to be very expensive very quickly and usually teams want their dresses to be a little bit more affordable see my favorite takeaway out of that was actually the the whole asymmetrical thing whereas so a lot of times the front and the back you would want to look 
similar then so that as they are facing different directions they still have a very uniform mm -hmm. look so that that's actually my favorite takeaway because that's not something i would have thought of and Till I had made them and designed them and gone, oh, well, that is, doesn't work at all. Yeah, but sometimes that can also be an effect wow. if you have a very skilled team who can handle it and mm -hmm. where you can use that, that can be something that you use in the choreography. Okay. So know your customer, I guess. Right. And, uh, you know, work with the coach um, or whomever you're, you're designing for to make sure that, that it's going to work for that team and that team's skill level right. too. Thank you so much, Janneke. Thank now, you. if you want to contact Janneke Lilia, her information is below. If you have found value in today's video, please share it with all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends, and go to sewlikeapro.com. Leave me your name and email address. I'll make sure that you always receive information about whenever I release a new video or the sewing school or other fun stuff that I come up with. Leave a comment at the bottom of this page Tell me what your big insight and takeaway is on this. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the share button. So that is it. Thanks again to Yannicka for being here. This is such a treat. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. But Thank anyway, you. we will see you again another time.